Halfway through the Downscaling Chronicles, I saw a trend with two avenues of downscaling. Simple line deletion and complex line averaging. The GBS Control, DEX and RetroTINK 5X are all line deleters, preserving the detail on those remaining lines drawn in 240p, much like wearing shutter glasses. By this method, games come out looking razor sharp, but the rawness of simple and geometric shapes make downscaling feel unwelcomed in certain scenarios. Whereas professional video scalers like the Corio 2 TV1750 weren't built with 240p in mind, but programs with custom resolutions can output 240p by blending the Y axis, which preserves detail but also softens the image. The DVD-O iScan HD Plus is in the same boat, a premium video processor that won't downscale to 240p out of the box and a huge box. This unit is almost bigger than the collective scalers I've featured so far, with a buffet of standard analog, VGA and DVI inputs. I chose to send HDMI through DVI and output RGBS through the VGA port, so there's no external transcoding. It also comes with a remote to complement the buttons on the front. There wasn't a ton of info online about using these units for 240p downscaling and the main point of reference came from Fudo and Blair on Shmups and Xavier on YouTube. I was fortunate that my unit already had custom timings programmed from the original owner. To set them, go into the output menu and alter the user resolution. There's my settings in the description Blair's, although he has different values depending on the CRT display, and Xavier's. You could even download one of the Corio's XML files from Shmups and program those. If none of them seem to work, you can make precise custom timings with these two sites. Type the desired resolution, for example 720x240, click enter, and copy the mode line over to the next site, import it, and hit calculate. Scroll down and these are the 240p timings. Unfortunately, there's no interlaced resolution option on the DVD-O, so a 480i output is sorely missing. Downscaling was almost as fast as the GBS and RetroTINK 5X, with only half a frame of lag when the input resolution was 720p 480p and 1080i. Just make sure to set the frame rate to 60Hz locked as unlocked raises the lag by a variable 1 to 2 frames. Lag when downscaling 480i and 60Hz locked was excessive with more than 3.5 steady frames. Interestingly, 480i smoothly deinterlaced to 240p whereas 1080i downscaled to 240p by Bob deinterlacing. So each progressive field flickers just like the Extron downscaling trick without the flicker filter. To see how the DVD-O achieves a 240p downscale, I tried to display the usual test patterns using the Spears and Munsell Blu-ray with the PS3 set to 480p, but it kept jumping out of sync on the 20L5, BVM20F1 and 15kHz widescreen Grundig. I tried my hand at setting different 240p timings and also tried Xavier's as he was downscaling the PS3 to a BVM D24. Hearing the screech from my 20F1 as I adjusted the sync timings was a scary ordeal. So I turned off the CRT and was guided by the front LED display. But even with Xavier's timings and variations of them, it wouldn't properly sync. So maybe it just had copy protection, but it does the same thing in gameplay, and HDCP on or off did nothing. I then tried connecting the PS4 and a standalone Blu-ray player in 480p, but got the same result. I went through all the different sync options, even combining HV sync on the output 
but to no effect. I fired up the Xbox 360 and didn't even get as far as an out of sync picture, just the DVD O's generic blue screen. I even tried to hook up the 360 by component and still nothing. The Nintendo Switch and Wii U were the only consoles it could competently display, which left me with a handful of games to help me understand how the DVD O behaves as a downscaler, especially by comparing to other scalers that either blend or drop lines. The sharpness of the DVD O's 240p downscale puts it a hair above the TV One's even softer picture, but it's no match for the sharper line deleting GBS. Static comparisons, however, don't fully represent gameplay. Here's what happens when the GBS receives a 480p source and drops every alternating line, causing the floor tiles and mesh gates in Streets of Rage 4 to shimmer and crawl whereas the TV1750 smoothly averages the Y-axis to mellow the picture, keeping those floor tiles looking static. As predicted, the DVD O scales in much the same way as the Koryu, with smooth vertical panning. But it also suffers from aspect ratio hiccups, resulting in regular intervals of uneven rows, which causes anything that passes through to warp and curl. Line blending results in a fairly accurate representation of 2x upscale 240p video, but also produces a ton of blooming. The Choreo 2 and DVD O may appear brighter on these captures, but the GBS control looks much cleaner and more accurate in person. Compared to the source sprite of Zangetsu in Curse of the Moon 2, the two tones that make up the cape's outline and inner shading are well defined on the GBS, whereas the DVD O's line blended 240p has a considerable loss of finer definition to the point of merging the red tones. The softening glaze that the DVD O applies to modern 3D content is reminiscent of playing a game on the Nintendo GameCube and Wii. With complex 3D games, those aspect ratio bumps are nowhere to be seen and it downscales with fluid motion and no obvious screen tearing or frame skips. And while text is easier to read in 240p on the DVD O versus any of the line deleting downscalers, it still doesn't make up for the missing 480i output. If you were paying attention to the lag test, you might have noticed the picture was grossly overscanned on the 720p input. I assume because the custom timings were optimized for 480p and I tried to program a custom resolution with 1280 pixels wide to suit 720p. But the issue was mostly in the vertical portion and I had to leave the vertical size at 240 to achieve a 240p, leaving no room to budge. With the 480p input timings, adjusting the underscan, input and output aspect ratio didn't make a world of difference. So a 720p input is technically a possibility, but I couldn't maximize its full potential. And as I suspected, a 1080p input didn't work either. Being picky with some consoles and limited handling of input and output resolutions, the DVD O cuts short this episode and my expectations. It's just too rigid in customizing a global 240p resolution that'll translate across multiple consoles and devices. But let's say that it could display whatever console I threw at it. And on paper, the iScan HD Plus shares similar qualities and limitations to the GBS control, briskly downscaling only 480p to 240p with no 480i output but it also has some of the disadvantages of the other downscalers. Softness just like the TV1750, and scaling bumps just like the DeX and RetroTINK 5X. The TV1750 was the first downscaler I tested in the series, and I still don't have an issue with the fidelity of the image, and same goes for the DVD-O. 
but with side-by-side -side comparisons, line deletions definitely growing on me. The iScan HD Plus is otherwise an exceptional upscaler, and if you own one of the few DVD O models that downscale to 240p, I'd recommend trying the custom timings as your mileage may vary. But from my experience, there's far better and more reliable options that beat the DVD O in every way. So I'm calling this a no contest. Thanks all for watching and happy gaming. That's not cool, buddies. You don't shoot a guy in the dick. <laughs>